Hello. Uh, Ed's, Ed's digging in his cooler, but welcome to the IFS podcast live review. We are back. It's been a couple of weeks. I am Bearcat, and I am causing all this. Woo. What the hell is, are you on? Uh, I am pumped up. I, I got so much work done today. I, I was just killing it at work, and then I uh, came home, mowed the grass. It was like hot as hell. Took the kids out. They, they went for a bike ride. I, I jumped in the shower. My hair is still wet. And I ran down here into my basement. And my house is way too hot. But down here in the basement, it's nice and cool. It's great. Yeah, we just turned the air on. Um, I liked how I went from heat off yesterday, air on today. Yeah, I, I am not turning the AC on. My daughter was asking for it. And I'm like, no, I can't do it. I, I can't do it. It's, it's either I turn the AC on or I sleep down on the couch on the first floor. <laughs> it's one yeah. of the two. Yeah. Uh, I, hey, Josh, welcome to the podcast. If you are joining us, say hello in the chat. Let us know what you're drinking. We got a fun lineup for you tonight. Uh, we got three beers, and they're all from Ying Yingling. So we're going to try something a little different. First up, the brand new Yingling Golden Pilsner. Uh, refreshing and smooth beer. This is brand new. This is the uh, this is the first new year round uh, beer from Yingling in like uh, something like seventeen years. Yeah, they don't do this real often. I love I love the Yingling twist off. Oh yeah, I love the twist off too. Save me from forgetting the bottle opener this week. Ooh, I'm uh, liking the glass. Yeah, uh, this was actually my grandpa. It's oh man, it looks dirty as hell. It well, it yeah, sitting, it was sitting up in my cabinet in the back. I don't pull this one out very often. This was my grandfather's glass. He was a Duquesne man. I went with the Duquesne here as well as I spilled my beer. Oops, um, that's good for the uh, resale value on that. Uh, so. Yeah, I I uh, went with the Duquesne Pilsner T-shirt, Duquesne Pilsner. Cause we're having a Pilsner, so Pilsner glass, right? Man, you're all decked out. I love these little Pilsner glasses. You know, the little uh, ten ounce ones. They're yeah, it's like it's like drinking ounce. at a Legion. Mm hmm. Oh, it's cold all the way down. Oh, that's nice. Um, wow, that's really crisp. Ooh, I like that. Oh, that is a little tasty. Yeah. Man, and I, I, I had some reservations about this mainly because of the brand on it. Just, I, I do not like Yingling Lager, the Amber Lager, at all. Are you burned um, out on it, or you just never liked? It? I, I think in college I just went balls to the wall with it and just kind of was like, all right, I'm done. They use it. They use uh, Ringwood yeast in that, I believe too. Yeah, and that just that. always tastes really disgusting to me. That yeah. Sam Adams Boston Lager does it too. Yeah, I know. You, I know you're not a big fan. I know. <laughs> Um, oh, man, I'll tell you what. They, there's only one problem I have with this beer right now. I've already put down like four ounces of it. It goes down. Fast. This is this is easy to drink. I'm I'm noticing that myself. Oh my god, I'm getting I'm gonna be pounding cans of this or bottles all summer. I can just tell. This is really crisp. I like it. I wish there was some more information on the bottle here. But yeah, it's it's not often that I refer to a beer as refreshing, but this actually is kind of refreshing. Yeah. Like even even I don't even consider Miller Light refreshing. This just has like a a, a real bright crispness to it that really nice. Yeah. I I'm, I, I'm taken aback. I was not expecting. I I I was not. I wasn't sure what we were getting into here. I was afraid it was going to taste um like an adjuncty kind of like pilsner, but it doesn't. It's it's great. It's really nice. I, I don't know what the ABV on this is. I'm going to try to pull up some information here. but I bet you it's like a five. It, it, it's, it's drinking like that. It's maybe a four and a half. Yeah, it's somewhere in that wheelhouse. This isn't, it's not overly, it, it's just so nice and light and easy. Yeah, and it is clean as, as, as a bell. It is really clear. Yeah, you can see my ugly mug right through that glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so while we're talking about Yingling and while I'm trying to find some more information on this beer, they, I was I went to Giant. I picked this one up. And I got two other Yingling beers. We'll try those two. Um, not the Amber. But on the on the way back, I see this huge billboard for the new ad campaign for, for Yingling. And I see another one later on. And it said fly above the radar and it has the the bottle and then the eagle's wings 
that that are from the logo they kind of like turned them up so you're underneath the wings and and i thought okay um it, it, it was an ad for the amber lager it made no sense to me um they have what i thought was a brilliant ad campaign in uh yingling lager's first name I mean, they own a style for the the entire state of pennsylvania and and parts of the whole mid-atlantic people order a lager in any number of bars and they expect to get a yingling that's exactly what they mean and then there's always some some yokel who has to make the joke that it's the name of like a, a panda in a chinese zoo or some shit like that. <laughs> and 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 it's uh and now they go with this you know fly above the radar I, I don't even know what that means i i understand fly below the radar but flying above the radar what are you what are you doing guys I, I don't I don't get it either. I don't get the visual. Um, I don't know. It, it would seem to make more sense if they were trying to tie in with the Philadelphia Eagles because of their region, but oh, I, I didn't think of that. But, uh, but it's too subtle. You would have to like throw it kind of in your face. Yeah. Like make I, the eagle wings green or something. Yeah. God, they do not have anything about this beer on their website. Literally, it's just it says new Yingling Golden Pilsner, refreshing and smooth. I can't tell you what the ABV is it on it. I can't tell you if it uses uh, Shay's hops. I can't tell you anything about this. Like, what? Why is this so hard? It's really odd because you could find that shit out about Miller Lite if you went to their website. To right. Find nutrition facts on it. What, what are you doing, Yingling? What are you doing? They, they, like, I can't find out anything about this beer. And it says read more, and then there's nothing more to read about it. <laughs> Oh, that's that is awful. Well, at least it doesn't direct you to their Facebook page. Yeah, I I don't know. Ah, uh, God. You, you 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 addressed one of my big gripes on Twitter about uh, you, if your website is your Facebook page, that, that's just that's no, that's a non-starter. I I've I've always had two gripes: one, uh, bars and breweries that make Facebook like their web page, and two. Bars and, and breweries that make a website that do not have their fucking days and hours of operation. First thing you see on that website, it's got to be 80th percentile of the reason people check your website. Yep. Yep. I, I, and you know what? You can't rely on Google to, to get the, the hours right nope. because it's just not, they don't update that frequently enough. You know, it really should be, how do I find you? What are the hours? And it should be really easy. And I want to know what you have on tap. Your website should be up to date all the time. One of the great things about, and we talk about them all the time, Al Kaminsky, you know exactly what's on tap because his digital board interfaces with his Twitter, interfaces with his website. If it's on the board, it's on the website. And every time he taps something new, boom, populates up a, a, a Twitter update. I will say this. Uh, that's what's really good about that, the paid, the untapped business service. Um, I get updates on my phone whenever the bar across the street puts a new keg on. So I know when they put the funny, you should mention it. Sunny side up goes on tap and I'm like, oh, I know what I'm doing after work today. You know, something like that. I think that's really, really handy too. But, you know, at least keep the website updated or Instagram your tap list or something. Oh, Seals Grove annoys me. They Instagram their damn food menu every day from the chalkboard, but never the tap list. I know, I know. <laughs> you dicks. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I, I did find out some more about the Golden Pills, but I had to I had to pull up their PR like pull, pull up from PR Newswire in order to get anything. Like, why isn't this on your website? PR Newswire, seriously? Yeah, really. Okay, so at four point seven percent, so we were close, and one hundred thirty five calories. I guess that's important. Important, and, and all malt malt beer combines pale and specialty malts, and Holler Two and Shaw's hops create a bold, noble, hot flavor. Brew with a smooth, clean finish. The balance of flavors enhance drinkability. Offer a quote new standard in refreshment for beer drinkers. I um, yeah, I can agree with that. I, I don't, don't know agree if it's with a new standard. It's very refreshing. I don't agree with bold hop flavor, but no, it's not. There's the the hops are there, but they're it's not bold. Um, quote: We spent over eighteen months developing this beer, and believe it is a great choice for outdoor social and active occasions so if i guess you're going mountain biking you should drink golden pilsner 
We're excited for consumers to try it, said Ian Wing. There you go. Um, and you know what? It, it is really refreshing. This is damn good. I'm yeah, gonna I'm drink a lot of it. I'm, I'm kind, kind of it. upset about it too. I was really hoping to be like, this is gonna blow. And I'm just like, ah crap. Deflate my balloon. Sorry, Yingling, nothing personal. No, this is really good. Oh wow. Yeah, but I, I got it in the bottle. Um, and really I want it in the can. But bottles were nice. There's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't they just put it in the can? I love getting it in the can. Uh, <laughs> Maybe your standards are too high. <laughs> oh boy, we're already making bad jokes. Uh, well, we've, been, we've been off for a while, so it's. Uh, I mean, we you know we say we've been off for a while, but we did a shitload of stuff over the past two weeks. Yeah, we did, and and we haven't gotten any of it out yet because there's just so much editing to do. Um, you know, we got the first draft of the edits done for the kickoff event. We interviewed a bunch of really interesting people, none more so than the Harris family uh, brewing, which is going to be Pennsylvania's first black owned and operated brewery. Those guys are awesome. They tell a great story. They've got a great story to share with everyone and they have a really nice beer. You went to Crawdaddy, excuse yeah. me, had uh, a bunch of theirs. We just had the one there, but you had a bunch. We had the pale ale on the show. What'd you have there? Uh, I had their uh, the Saison, which was uh, pretty decent. He uses like a blue agave in it. Um, it was interesting. Uh, Saisons are so wide open style wise that he can tweak a little bit of that. I thought it was good. Um, you know, they're not at world beater status yet, but they're like good. And then I had their stout, which I thought was real good. Um, he's really doing a real good job with that. Very very good stuff. Chocolate stout. Um, not not overly sweet. More of like a bitter not bitter is probably a poor choice of words, but, but not like a sweet chocolate. Um, I thought that that was really good. So, you know, for guys that are basically operating on a skeleton crew and, uh, you know, out of a garage, they're, they're doing a real good job with that. And I'm pretty excited to see, I know they got a space up on uh, 13th and whatever up there in, on Allison Hill, but they're talking about opening that and doing a tasting room and I think the sky's the limit for those guys, especially with what they're trying to do. And I don't want to spoil anything for our interview, but uh, you know they're trying to they're trying to bring craft beer into their neighborhood, which is you know probably a pretty big challenge. But I feel like these guys are really enthusiastic and up for it. You know what i I'm going to uh, just disagree with you slightly. I don't think it's that big of a challenge. I think this is a market that has uh, just been totally ignored. Uh, and no one's actually reached out to them. I think that when you, if you have a good product and you have something that is marketed to the African American community and says, Hey, we, we want you as part of this too, that they'll, they'll come in. I think that there's some barriers. Um, there's some cultural barriers that people need to get over, you know, uh, that this is some kind of elitist thing and. Uh, that it's that it's a, got a bro culture about it. Once they get past all all themselves and they open it up, I, you know, I I think it's gonna be great. It, we were and I don't want to spoil the interview, but when you talk to the guys and 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 you're asking them like what got you into craft beer and they're telling the story, it's like wow, they said they were just ignored, and that's that's shameful. Yeah, I mean it's a story, but I, I will say this. Going to their event after after the kickoff party at Crawdaddy's, I mean, there was that place was crawling with people, and they they couldn't have been happier. They were all worried, you know, about turnout and everything. And they said, you know, thanks to all the local Beer Week, uh, uh, GK Visual for doing the port and PA. Uh, they thanked us, even though none of our information has is is out yet. Um, but you know, just. Just everybody media wise that's embracing it and getting them in front of cameras and, and microphones is they said it's been a real big help and uh, their turnout really really supports that and I think that they're they're off to they're off to the races here. Yeah, awesome. All right, um, let's uh, let's I, I do want to uh, you know hop on to that. You know they they were worried that people weren't going to show up. I felt the exact same way about our event. We, we have two podcasts that are just in the can that we need to get posted, and, and we're working on it. The The first one's going to kick off the event. We've talked to a bunch of local brewers. The second one is the Untapped 
uh, and social media live show where we, we had an audience. We, we sold out. 50 people paid to see us put on a podcast that we normally do for free from my basement. And uh, there, there was free beer and everyone seemed to have a really great time. The interview with Greg was amazing. I couldn't believe people showed up. Uh, Tierney did a really nice job. Jeff Kupka, Kupko in what was, I think, his last you know craft beer event before he moved, which is sad. But uh, he came out and he did a great job. Ed was a magician with the sound and the recording. Still, and it's a miracle that pulled off. It, it, I, had, I had zero idea that was going to work. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't quite, uh, you know, just a miracle, but it was close. He just made it happen. And a ton of credit to Easy Pretzel, who right now is watching the hockey game instead of watching us, I'm sure. But a lot of credit to him because, you know, he, I, give, I give Dave a lot of, a hard time. And, and, and maybe hear it on the podcast, you don't. Uh, Dave and I, we, we like to, to, uh, to, to grind each other a little bit and that, and it, it's always been a good fun, but Dave cares and believes in like the possibility of things far more than I ever will. And he just believed that this was all going to work and that we could get this. We could, that one, we could get 50 people two that like, it was actually going to get off the ground and that, and most importantly, he believed that he could get Greg to, from on tap to, to take a train down from New York city and spend, you know, two hours with us. I didn't think there was a chance in hell that this was going to happen. And, you know, Dave's just got this magical thinking and this power of positivity, I guess, in some ways, and he just made it happen. And it was awesome. It was great. I think the microcosm for that whole thing was everything. We're done. We pack up. I'm pulling in my amp to the house and the strap just breaks right on the porch. <laughs> like the one thing that went wrong just happened right there. And it was like, like, I feel like we dodged a thousand bullets. Oh yeah, we that, did. That could have easily turned anything to shit. And uh, I mean, learned a lot of lessons. I mean, next time that shit should run like clockwork. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I don't want, I, I don't want to pull it back the curtain too far on all this, but it's, it's something I hope that we can do again. And I think we will. And I, we've already had some interest from someone who'd like to host another live show, which I think is amazing. And it's, it's, it's going to be off in the future. We're not going to do it anytime soon because in the end, uh, look, this is just a hobby and it's going to stay that way. Um, and I, I just can't wait for you all to listen to it. All right. Uh, let's rate this beer and then let's move on to another one. Cause we got two more to go. Um, I'll tell you what, God, I, I'm I'm really excited to drink this all summer. I am absolutely in love with it. It's crisp, it's clean, it's it's un it's not very fussy. And uh, I'm done with mine. <laughs> That's yeah, not- it does disappear. I'm I've been kind of nursing the end of it because I don't want it to be over. And I kind of wanted it to, to warm up and open up a little bit because when it's ice cold, man, it just it just goes. And this is perfect. I was out mowing the lawn, I was helping my kids learn to ride their bikes. I was all sweaty. I got in the shower and now I had this ice cold, refreshing beer. It's perfect for, for like the, the evening I had. And you know what? I'm going to give it an eight. I'm really impressed. I really liked it. I really like it. I'm, I'm right there with you. I don't think it's, it's not complex. It's not complicated. It just is what it is. Uh, easy to drink. People are going to probably drink gallons and gallons of this uh, for the next couple of months especially if it doesn't cool down here. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm not quite as high. Uh, I, 7.5 from me out of 10, which is still really damn good. Just Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to reach into the Batman cooler. And what, what, what are we going with next? Should we go with um, – let's do the porter. Let's do the porter. We're going to do Yingling Porter. This is, this is a classic, um, you know – we Ed and I were debating for a while what we were gonna uh, be drinking tonight, and I wanted to do the Golden Pilsner because I was kind of excited to see what was gonna happen, what was new, and then we decided, well, or I just proposed, and Ed goes along. We're gonna do three different Yingling beers, and mostly because I wanted to do this one too. I love Yingling Porter, so 
just a heads up. I'm a big fan of this one, and I have been for a long, long time. I think this is a very underrated beer. I don't think I've had a straight up Yingling Porter in ten years. I would say what? I'm oh, telling you, that's a mistake. I'd... Oh, that's a mis- That's a mistake. No, so no. my whole my whole life is riddled with mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, th- this is four point seven percent again, and th- this is a, this is kind of thin for a porter. It's the, not real heavy in the body. But man, look at that color. It's nice and dark. It's got a slightly light brown tannish head. And man, Ooh, roasted, doggy. roasted and bready. I mean, this is the antithesis, antithesis of the beer we just had. This is the other end of the spectrum. Um, not it, it, The body is up from, from what we had before, but not by much. Hmm. Smoky, a little bit chocolatey. Not much, but a little bit. Ooh, that's nice. Mm. Oh, Ed's taking a big pull. Oh, I like that. All right. Oh, yeah. Mm, that is, but you can really get the smoke. I haven't had this in a long time. Uh, smoke right off the bat. Not overly smoky, like a, like a smoke porter, but definitely has that nice smoky, roasty flavor to it. Um, this is definitely something you're going to want to let maybe warm up a little bit, but boy, does that flavor take me back? Holy hell. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'll tell you what I, I was at. Um, I, I was out of town for work and I was at dinner and I had the dragon in yum yums by uh, uh, dogfish head. They had that on draft and I wasn't that impressed with it. I just, I didn't think it was that great. I didn't think it was that interesting. I thought it was a little too weird for my taste. We, and and someone asked me what my second beer was going to be, and, and I went with a Miller Light, and just because it was also a draft, and I just I didn't, they didn't have anything else very interesting. It was a very small restaurant, and as soon as I saw it, they they also had this on draft. I knew I made a mistake, and I went and I went right for it. It, and you know what I. This beer just never disappoints, and you can get it for like twenty bucks for a, for a uh, for a case. And this is a this I think is an underappreciated beer in America. It's a great price point. It's a good porter, and it always delivers. It really does. And the fact that you haven't had one in ten years is crazy to me. I'm guessing, but I, I would I would peg it around that. I would venture to guess that they probably made this before they made the lager. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's definitely this. This has been around forever. The okay. lager, the lager is not that old. I want to say the lager is only like maybe twenty five, maybe thirty years old. Oh, okay, that makes a little more sense. So they probably had premium and porter, and yeah. of course that leads to black and tan. So, so you've never, you've never checked this in, into Untapped. If it's ten years, all right. Maybe I'm maybe I'm making shit up here. Let me check. Yeah, that 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 because there's always like a one off that I don't remember. Yeah, Mm, I'm trying to see what was the last time I had this. What I see, dark brewed porter. There is no check mark. No check mark. Wow. Uh, The last time I had this, other than just a couple weeks ago, was 2015. And I gave it 3.75. Oh, God, I think I think my tastes have changed because I'm gonna go higher than that this time. <laughs> Man. Um, yeah, this is this is great. And let's see, let's see what the hoi polloi really think of this one. Uh, oh, I used that word the other night. <laughs> did you? Oh no, at, at Little Big Beer Fest when I got there early and I said I want to go and get some of these beers before the hoi polloi comes in. <laughs> I, felt, I felt I did you proud. Uh, you know, I love that. Uh, the the rating for 18,000 check-ins across, uh, you know, all of Untapped is 3.36. Uh, I've got friends, 22 of my friends have rated this, and, they, and their rating is slightly lower at 3.32. So. Seems a little low. I think it's a little low. Let's see what the Golden Pills came in. The Golden Pilsner, hmm, it's got. 1500 check-ins and it's 3.42 is the average. I've got five friends who've checked it in and their average is 3.25. I think that's way low. 
this is re that was really good. Um, yeah. So Harrisburg Beer Week. It's it's closed. I went with the Harrisburg Beer Week glass, but you can't tell because this beer is so dark. Um, another great successful week. It was fantastic by all accounts. It was a it was a day longer than it had been in the past. They stretched it to ten days, but um, it seemed like they filled the time wisely. Yeah, they had a lot of big events. It, it, it from all accounts, it went pretty well. Seems like uh, everything kind of went off without a hitch. Little Big Beer Fest. There's always going to be some weirdo that does something crazy, but that's just the that's the nature of a brew fest of that that type. Oh, was there a weirdo that did something crazy? Because I must have missed that. Yeah, Wait, too it wasn't me, was it? No. Okay. <laughs> no, we just got our stupid faces in the paper like a bunch of rubes. Ah, oh, that was great. <laughs> yeah. That was great. With, with, with our with our our the, our our viewer that we wanted the viewer that's actually in the chat, uh, Josh, who tonight is drinking KBS, and uh, nice. he's never had the porter. Oh, Josh, got see, it. I'm not the only one. Come on, come on, get on that. Uh, yeah, Josh, you and I made the paper. That was great, and uh, I thought it was a great. I thought I thought Little Big Beer Fest was was a great event. It still felt really tight in that space. Yeah, that that space. Thank God it, it dissipated, and there was like that outside area that people could kind of like meander out. But then, of course, it had to start raining. But yeah. uh, it 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 felt a little compressed. But I I don't know. I'm a smaller guy, so it doesn't affect me as much. I can sneak through little tiny areas, but um, you know, for someone of your size, I could imagine the walls close in pretty quick in that situation. Yeah, it wasn't great. It, I did not, I did not love the the uh, tightness at a couple of junctures, but I thought it was well um, spaced as far as where they put the breweries, and they had a ton of food. Uh, in years past at the uh abc they never had enough food the food was never right it would wipe out and that can be a problem when you're drinking uh you know this heavily is that as that that beer fest tends to provide but a ton of food weiss markets did a really nice job and i got to come home with an entire tray of sandwich wedges yes you did a big giant deli tray of sandwich wedges came with me on that stupid bus back into the city. And then I had to get an Uber because I didn't want to walk eight blocks with my stupid. And by the way, I will have you know, by Monday at 10 a.m., every single last one of those was gone. Oh, that's I, awesome. I chowed the hell down on those things. So, by the way, do you still have a keg in your living room or, or were you able to? Get yep. It? Just as predicted. <laughs> I might have to strap that in the car tomorrow and uh, or Saturday. Uh, we're going to see Avengers again, and then maybe swing over to Al's with it and uh, drop I'm, it on their doorstep like a child we don't want. I'm taking, <laughs> yeah, put it in a basket, give to the good home. Uh, you know, back to back to the uh, live show that we did with Greg from Untapped. Big thank you to Adam Porter, who is speaking of Porter, Adam Porter of uh startup harrisburg who who gave us the space also the midtown cinema and uh his grocery store down downtown i forget the name of it provisions provisions there you go i wanted to say grays i'm thinking of those stupid boxes that you get yeah but yeah uh we actually got to see that up close and personal when we did the vip party but yeah he he couldn't have been more excited about the event and from what i understand that was uh, uh one of the I guess they've had some challenges doing events at the startup in the past, but our turnout, our space, what we did, what we had, he was really impressed and he was having a good time with that. Yeah. And I I think it's an absolute certainty we're going to do it again. I, I haven't asked you about it. I haven't asked Dave about it, mostly because I think it's obvious we'll do it again next year. Well, now that I know that the shit works and I can actually relax, I might be able to enjoy myself. The worst part is we're like, a day or two out and I'm already running around like a chicken with my head cut off and you two are just kind of like, eh, whatever. And I'm like, why is nobody else <laughs> fucking stressed out about this? <laughs> I, I was afraid if I got more stressed that it was going to freak you out. So no, it would have been like, I'm a freak. Like the, <laughs> the whole time I'm like, am I just crazy? Like, should I not be concerned about this? It, it was, it was not, but that's me. I always like to die a thousand deaths. And then when, when the spotlight comes on, I just chill out. Like, you're yeah. fine. 
I, I will say this. Once it was over, I was exhausted. I, I just I just wanted to take a nap. I, I felt like I had been in a fight. Yeah. 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 It, it was just. And then we had this after party, and I, and I didn't think anyone was going to show up for that either. But a ton of people came. That was a zoo. It was, and and it, a couple things we're going to do different next year. I think we'll have, I think we'll plan the after party maybe a little bit further in advance. I think we're going to plan. I, I'd like to plan. Well, the, for having uh, to change venues midstream, I don't think that went too we, bad. We 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 went through four venues, five before we got to the. I, no one wanted us. <laughs> Well, that's why. I, well, Speakeasy had an event at like seven. They had like a private party upstairs or something. I'm like, we can be out of there by seven. We'll just do five to seven. And Adam yeah. was like, sure, because yeah. it's not like they had to set anything up. We were just up there. We just needed a space and, and and an opportunity to give some bar a lot of money, and we did. People just kept drinking. There are a lot of people left there pretty tuned up. So yeah, I I, I think next year a couple of things that I'd like to maybe do differently. We, we want to get, I'd really like to be able to get it set up a little bit earlier so we can get into the, um, in, into the, uh, the brochure that they have. Um, oh God, I don't know who we're going to get for a guest. Luckily I don't have to worry about that quite yet, but we should be thinking about that. And, uh, the ticketing, the ticketing, I had a couple people, you know, were like, wait, it's not through the Harrisburg beer week site. And, you know, Tierney from Stouts and Stilettos, thank God she was able to take care of the ticketing because I don't think we, I would have ever figured that out. And so next year we're going to try to do the ticketing right through the, the uh, right through the, the the website again. You know, we raised five hundred bucks for uh, the uh, Harrisburg River Rescue, and next year I hope hope we can maybe we can raise let's hope six hundred dollars. Be nice to raise a little bit more. I would go increments. I'd say seven fifty. We seven fifty. Okay, let's try. We're gonna try for seven fifty next year. So and for the love of God, can we get both sixtals next year? So I don't have a half barrel of fucking beer in my <laughs> living room. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, that was the other thing when I'm texting Friday morning. Uh, so what size kegs were you getting? And nobody knew. I was like, I'm gonna flip a table over. I swear yeah. to God. Yeah, you you were not you were not a happy camper. Um. All right, let's get back to this beer. And, and I wasn't I, I mad. I was just like, ah. Uh, no one could have blamed you if you were mad, so it's okay. <laughs> All it right. takes a lot to get me angry. Yeah. That was more just stress. I'm like, what is going on? But hey, all my worries went out the window the minute the minute the mics went live and we were recording and nothing shorted out of system. We were good. Yep. yep. All right. You're you're up on this one. Ah, this is a throwback for me. It's bringing back some good memories. We used to drink this. I, I, I think I had my first one probably in high school. Um, this also takes me back to we would buy it as a uh, craft beer try in college. And this was right next to the uh, the Yingling premium cases that we had at the beer store by our college actually were the old like very, very old flip top boxes that were returnable bottles for the Yingling premium. So we always thought that was neat and we would get those too and you had to pay like the extra three bucks for the case or whatever. But yeah, really neat. This takes me back. I really like it. It's a well done porter. It's completely to style. The color's right. The taste is right. Um, it's getting me in all the right places. I, I, I'd give this, uh, I'd, I'd go with another 7.5 on this. It's perfectly fine. It's good. It's drinkable and people should seek it out. It's yeah. not going to ruin your day either. It's a nice, nice middle of the road percent there. Yeah, I I think that uh, if you are a if you love beer, right, and and people are like I love craft beer. Okay, yeah, yeah, we all love craft beer. Um, do do you do you really appreciate um, the the whole spectrum of beer? And and that's part of what I want to discuss tonight. You know, do we pigeonhole ourselves into being these elitists where we go? No, 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 that's beneath me. I, if this beer is beneath you, I would pose that you don't really love beer. Um, beer is a spectrum, and there's a lot of things that fall on it. And not everything can be Last Buffalo in the park, and nor should it be. Uh, there is a space in craft beer for, for Yingling Porter. And this is a beer that you should, you should uh, seek out. You should try it. When you see it in a, in a bar, you should consider it. 
Um, it's got some really great roasty, toasty notes in there. Uh, it, it's 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 not got the body of what I would consider to be a really great porter, but it, I will tell you, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, this is one of the best porters. I will uh, stand behind it 100% any day. Um, are, are there better porters out there? Sure. Are they for eighteen ninety nine dollars a case on sale, on sale? No. And do they have the history of this? Look, Yingling was brewing this back when no one was brewing porters. No one in America is brewing porters. Uh, this is this is a beer that you should give to an early adopter of craft beer, and and it's gonna it's gonna all the flavors are uh, readily apparent. The little bit of spokiness, the chocolate malts, the 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 roasty flavors, the 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 nose is is it's not uh, overly aggressive. But it, it's got a nice little bit of breadiness to it. This is a good beer. And if you've not had it, it, you should seek it out. If you've not had it in a long time, you should seek it out. And you know what? If you sit down with a six pack of this some night, I promise you you'll have a good you'll have a good evening. Uh, and for those reasons, I, I'm gonna give this one a seven and a half. There you go. Here's my favorite thing is I'm twisting the caps back on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Possibly. I just, I just pop them back on. You can kind of just push them on, you know? I don't have that kind of strength. I normally don't, but I must be having a good day. You know? All right. We got one last one. So, uh, Josh asked a, a good question while, we, while I reach into the uh, – Batman lunchbox and get out my last beer here. I can't believe that fits three beers in it. Uh, just two. Now, here's a label that that changed. I don't re yeah. I don't remember it being this uh, like succinct. I remember it being a lot different for whatever reason. Yeah, it was way too busy before. Way too busy before. But uh, black and tan. This is a beer that I i used to really love getting these i they would go on sale back when i worked at the uh, beer distributor up there on 22 beer express this would go on sale and i would pick it up like that i loved getting these it's been a long time since i had one though uh and, and the reason why i picked this up over the porter is this went on sale a lot more frequently so uh, bear with me here i gotta finish my porter And you Jeez. know what? I don't mind. I don't mind pouring this right back in the same glass because this is half porter already. So you said Josh had a question. Yeah, Josh had a question for us. What was our? Uh, was that, was that our favorite beer at uh, Little Big Beer Fest? Best beer at Little Big Beer Fest. Ice Luge. Uh, that Ice Luge was. Here's what I'll say: the Ice Luge was the one I will never forget. Nineteen point nine four percent. Uh, the blueberry uh, liquor barrel aged uh, barley wine by Wolf and what is it 2050 yeah um, brewery god that was fucking nuts it well, really I'll was you, I'll tell you the one that, that I, I really 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 enjoyed that I wasn't expecting uh, Chatty Monk's IPA yep. was yep. off the fucking chart good I was glad I got that one early because it had a lot going on. And when I went back at the end of the night to get it again, I was like, oh, well, my palate's wrecked because it, it wasn't quite as impressive the second time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'll happen. But uh, I, I also thought the raspberry stout uh, Millworks was excellent. The, yeah. the barrel aged yep. raspberry. Yep. Um, not a whole lot of bad beers there. Oh, Little Red Corvette. The uh, Yes. Uh, yes. Vegetable Mad Hunter Chef, and, and Mad, Mad Chef. Chef. Yeah. The, the other one that stuck out for me from Mad Chef was the uh, the Northeast. Was it, yeah, the, the milkshake IPA that was done with the with the uh, cacao uh, milk. So when they take the 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 chocolate pods that 
they dry in the sun, there is this cacao milk, and he was using that instead of lactose in order to build the body and that creaminess, something I'd never heard of. And I I told uh, their brewer, I was like, this is brilliant. It's crazy. And and it just seems such so to so naturally fit with their brand and and, and his, you know, uh Latino or Puerto Rican uh you know methods and styles, just absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I, I was I was pleasantly surprised by that. And you know, Vegetable Hunter, very small place right here in, in well, that's technically downtown Harrisburg. That you know, it's a blink and it, it blink and you'll miss it. Vegetarian food, uh, you know, all vegan slash vegetarian stuff. And I, I thought they knocked the beers out of the park. It was yeah. really good. I had the little red Corvette at at uh, the Vegetable Hunter the night of our uh, live show, and I also had it with the. When did you end up there? Well, uh, after after I left Sturgis, I went there for a beer and some food. And that was before I went to your house looking for my laptop that that had gone missing. That was on my uh, kitchen counter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I I had the little red Corvette there, and I also had their um their cauliflower tacos. So they're a vegan restaurant, not vegetarian, vegan, and they they were so good. I couldn't believe it. There it was fried cauliflower with, with this really very spicy uh, sauce, and then some red cabbage. And man, ah, they were unbelievable. So good. Yeah, they do a pretty good job down there. And I'm, you know, I'm not vegan, vegetarian, whatever, but I do love vegetables. And when you can take food, vegan food, and make it so that a meat eater such as myself is, you know, they, they do a real good job of bridging that gap and just saying, here's some hearty food that you can make with vegetables. And it tastes amazing too. It's, they do a, they do a real good job. And I'm glad uh, Tim's, Tim's beers are working out down there. It seems like everything's going uh, going pretty well. Yeah. I, I think Tim's doing a real nice job. That seems like a good spot for, for, for him uh, because he, he is highly experimental. He's doing crazy stuff. And uh, th- another guy that, that seems to have found his niche is Brad Moyer with this 2050. He's been there for, you know, what, nine months, a year now. And every time I have something from him, it's always really good. It's definitely a better fit than when he was at Boobies out here in Mount Joy, which was just obviously a fucking nightmare. That did not work. Yeah, I guess that place is a disaster. It's... I have I I have not been back to there since he left and and all the the mess that they had and I really like to go there. It's right in my backyard. Uh, the beers were never really good. They, uh, they didn't even push their own beer. Like you'd be like, oh, what do you have yeah. on tap? They're like, well, we have beer, but you don't want it. That's because it wasn't good. Uh, when 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 Brad was there, they they were doing better, uh, but it was obvious they were doing it on the cheap. The, the nice thing about going there was is that it was one of the few places where I could get Palm, which is a a, a Belgian that you I rarely see, but they always had it on tap, and I was always happy to get it, even though it always kind of tasted a little bit like old. But Yeah, they don't have a sterling reputation of cleanliness. No. No, they do not. Um, in the chat, uh, weirdest beer from... Little Big Beer Fest, which had a lot of weird beers. Uh, pretty, pretty fucking pebbles. Yeah, that was pretty weird. I mean, is that a weird beer? Or is that a gimmick? Well, he he did it. He did the same thing last year with the Peep Golden Ale, and I thought it was a gimmick there, and it worked. Uh, I thought that worked better than the Fruity Pebbles. The Fruity Pebbles was good, but I think because. The peep beer just to me just sounded so outlandish. I was like, this is never gonna work. And then when it did, it was far more surprising. Whereas the fruity pebbles, I've seen the the cereal and a beer thing work before. The one thing I was kind of surprised regarding the uh, fruity pebbles beer was the color was so clean. I thought the color was gonna be a fucking mess, but it it, it did turn out pretty well. Um, it was 
it was weird in that it was using fruity pebbles to make it, but I didn't think that the that the flavor profile was all that weird or strange. It, it wasn't you know going off into some uh, weird space. Now the little red Corvette from Vegetable Hunter that was a weird beer. It had almost like a carrot juice kind of consistency to it to me, which I thought was great. I, Zero Days Beet Beer is another one that I'm like, what do you, what are we doing here? <laughs> it's like, like beets? What the? Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Uh, and the Mexican style from Bonechar was way too hot. Uh, oh, I liked the, it. It was great. the Mexican Lazarus. Yeah, it was phenomenal. It was great. It was just, I, I was happy that it was just a little bit. Uh, I, I I enjoy the heat in that. That doesn't that doesn't bother me too bad. Yeah, I I would not have, I, I wouldn't want a pint of it. I'll put it that way, but it was excellent. He, here's the thing about the Lazarus beer and what Alan's doing. His his Lazarus is such a great base. He can he can play with it in all these different ways, and I just trust it implicitly. And it seems to always turn out great. The it's like it's so like good. Evil Twin. They do all the biscotti breaks and yep. Mexican biscotti break and birthday yep. cake Mexican, and you can just take the base of that and and play around, and it's always going to turn into something pretty damn good. Yeah, I I don't want to say that it's a blank canvas, but he can almost treat it like that. Like we can get really weird and and do some really crazy stuff, and it's going to always go work out. In the chat, tiramisu version. Yeah, tiramisu version was insane. That was so good. Yeah, the so the the hazelnut he's done, it's fantastic. Lazarus is one of the best beers that we have in Central PA, bar none. And it's crazy. And we another spoiler from talking to them at the kickoff party, which hopefully we'll get out here in the next couple of days, was uh uh just the departure from what he was brewing previously with Milbach. And then he comes right out of the gate with this big hearty stout. And you're like, where is this guy get off, you know, and just pulled it off so tremendously. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's great. It's great stuff. I I, I love what Alan's doing. Uh, I had some reservations about that space. I thought it was a, a little bit of uh, off the beaten path. It, it's a great facility because it's got it, it's it's open and, it, and it's it's never uh, feels like you're cramped because it, it's just this this long open space and and it's welcoming and he's got a nice bar especially now that alan put in a, a foot rail when he didn't have a foot rail it was a fucking disaster but it, it's it's really great um but i just i was just worried he wasn't getting enough traffic but i was wrong he's he's doing gangbusters out there it's been great well, yeah, all they had to do is spend a zillion dollars and put a shooting range in right next door. That, that shooting range, I was in there. <laughs> it, it is a zillion dollars. I don't know where those guys got the capital backing for it. It's unbelievable. It's, I I didn't even know it was there. Like, that must have gone up in a hurry. It did. I, I don't remember it being there, but yeah. Well, I mean, good for him. You know, that's uh, getting in before, you know, uh, getting in on the good good side of that and things building around him. That'll... That'll work to his favor, and it seems like they're getting good, really good crowds there. I, I know for some of the beer week events they did, they had a real, real good turnout. So, good for him. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um. So, let's uh, talk about Black and Tan. Four point six percent, so a little bit lower than the last two. Um, and this is this is a marriage between the. The porter we just had, and then the Yingling Premium, which is totally undrinkable. Uh, do not drink Yingling, por- Yingling Premium. If you're going to go cheap, go more Chesterfield. Uh, I was going to say, what's your thoughts on the Chesterfield? Um, it, if I'm if I'm looking to uh, do some chesties, I'm going to look elsewhere. It, 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 look, if I if I'm in that price range, I'll just I'll just go hunting elsewhere. Chesterfield has this oddly robust hop profile to it that is very strange you just don't look at that bottle and go i'm gonna taste hops but man do you ever yeah yeah that's true that's true um I, i'm being reminded by the way the penguins won so that that that, that, that warms the cockles of my heart um it's time for the sticker board and so oh, i this, forgot about the sticker board oh what yeah. do you got there so oh, all right uh, this is this is a thank you 
to like one of our our absolute if i can get why can't i get the backing off this thing got this is some great radio here let me tell you let's watch bill fumble around you gotta be kidding me what son of a bitch you should have primed it you should have primed, primed it, it. Uh, so well, that's th why stickers okay. all need that perforation on the back oh they do or that split where you can just yeah, like yeah. you know um so this is girls pine out we got this from nicole and nicole was 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 the one that pointed out to to easy pretzel to dave that hey um great greg, greg's looking to do you know a talk and you you should you should go after him you should get that i'm still not getting the sticker okay i'm gonna put it on the board but it's just not gonna go on right now um thank you nicole uh she is a big time supporter and participant in girls pine out uh girls pine out is the type of like group that craft beer needs you know it it can't just be all dudes that look like me all the time it we gotta like you know get other people into this stuff and I, I I I gotta I gotta point out something though, dudes that look like you, you are a tall, huh. fully shaven white guy that shows up usually in some sort of blazer tie, <laughs> spenders. You you couldn't be more not craft beer than yeah. you show by, up. By, by the way, I I've been struggling with this and it is perforated. On the oh, ground. you ass. <laughs> God, I'm such an idiot. And, <laughs> and and now that Dave is watching, um, I, I'm glad that that he tuned in now after I said nice things about him. So he doesn't have to worry about. I don't have to worry about him having uh, seen that. But and there we go, girls pine out. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you to girls pine out. Uh, if you are a uh, woman in craft beer, two things you should check out: girls pine out, which is all over the place, and then also. Um, pink boots society right so that that's what uh pink boots society is to get women into brewing actually brewing which is really great uh i'd never heard of that yeah i, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel bad i shouldn't say that out loud probably i should probably know that yeah uh josh says uh gotta get some north carolina stickers well you know get on that um all right let's uh can i can i just say josh what a southern gentleman he is! It was so fun hanging out with him and and seeing him in person. I had a really good time. Gentleman, are we hanging out with the same guy? <laughs> He's got the softest southern accent. It's oh, it's it's, it's like a just, soft breeze. Yeah, it, it's real subtle. It's real easy. Um, it, it, and he's the nicest guy. Uh, I, I, and we had so many people come up. And, and talk to us about the show and 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 talk to us after the live event so many of our listeners came out so many of our family and friends and and you know you, you kind of put these things out there and you just like mm, is this shit and you don't really know and so when you get feedback it just it's just so nice no, so we just strike a chord with the demographic that enjoys listening to shit that's all <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so no, but uh, I, I think uh you know for for doing the grassroots and 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 the way that we kind of slap all this shit together we i think we do probably a better job than we give ourselves credit for and when people come up to you and tell you that they saw this or uh tattered flag said you know appreciated our live review of their beers uh, they've mentioned that on a bunch of occasions it it, it really makes you I, I don't, it amazes me a that you know people are out there actually listening to us but b that you know people aren't afraid to come up and say something about it it really makes you feel good um you know not that we're changing the world but at least we're entertaining and that's you know what it's all about so uh, always come up and say hi we love hanging out with people and drink a beer it's it's great to see everybody and we're we're always glad to hang out it is it is uh we're 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 getting close to an hour um couple orders of business we're gonna have the kickoff event coming out soon you know we just got a couple uh steps left for the uh the editing process we're, we're getting really close that's tough to edit because there's just you know we're interviewing this guy we're interviewing that woman we're interviewing that lady we're interviewing that man and and now we gotta like 
get it all woven together and that takes a lot of work the editing is much further uh, ahead on the uh live panel that we did and but that one's gonna come out second and that, that one's not quite i think is time sensitive so uh subscribe to the show and look it's free the best way in order to uh support what we do is to share it with other like-minded people so we're always happy if uh you could just turn other people on to what we're doing here uh with that uh it's time to review this last beer this is the yingling black and tan um i'll tell you what the, the new label is much better uh but they haven't improved the beer that is inside it uh, I, I i do like that they actually put porter and premium beer on there because there was always a discussion in the past at least with my dumbass friends about whether it was the porter and the lager or the porter and the premium i i'm pretty sure that this predates the uh lager the amber lager it probably i would assume it does yeah yeah um 4.6 percent you know what this this is i i feel like what they've done is they've taken all the the best parts about the porter and they've kind of wrung them out um the smokiness is gone those chocolate bits are just drowned out um it's thinner and and that porter is already not very thick um Easy Pretzel's pointing out that's an offensive name to the Irish. It, this, this is not a black and tan. It, it's so we're we're not going to go there, uh, but it's not. And uh, you know what? It, it's just I used to like it a lot more, but I also used to have a lot uh, more pedestrian interest in beer. And and you know what if. If you're standing there and you're deciding between the porter and the black and tan, I don't understand why you'd pick this. Um, that being said, hey, it's not bad. I, I'll, I'll give it a five. I'm a little higher than you, but yeah, I, I agree. They kind of took the porter and kind of stripped the soul out of it with this beer. I understand why they do it. It makes sense, you know, with their with their products, you know, to to mix the two together. I get it. I, it, you're, it it lacks a lot of the personality of the porter, which I'm glad I still saved like a third of the glass over there, so I can go back to it. But yeah, I, I'm a, I'm not as high on this. The the porter was was really a, a nostalgia tickler for me. This one, I kind of remember it differently, I guess. And I don't know, that's probably just hazy memories from way back. But uh, I, I'm gonna give it a six. It's fine. It's nothing great. But after after drinking the porter, this is a massive step down for me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's do a quick review. Golden Pills. Uh, I gave it an eight. Ed gave it a seven and a half. You know, Porter, we both agreed on this one. Seven and a half, correct? Yep. Okay. And the Yingling Black and Tan. I gave it a five. And Ed gave it a six. So, uh, you know, uh, as, is, as is generally the case, Ed and I kind of mostly agree on these if you can only have one uh which one are you gonna take ed porter but that's just i'm a dark beer guy i'm gonna take that yeah. every day of the week i i i i rated the the pilsner a little bit higher uh but i totally agree i'm gonna take the porter every time um that porter is is classic and if you haven't had it you got to get it the i i i want to try the the golden pilsner in a uh can and i'm gonna probably have to, to hunt down a 12 pack or a case of that uh pretty soon just throw that in the uh fridge the the pilsner is you know it's a lawnmower beer it just disappeared man just you could just suck them down all right uh now i don't else? have a lawn can i still call beers lawnmower beers <laughs> uh, sure 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 uh well while, while you're out there sweeping all those leaves off your sidewalk you know so Ugh, don't get me started all right. Um, anything else? I'm good. I we did a little bit, little mini, little mini preview of the shows to come here and uh, mission accomplished. We got three Yingling beers in our gullets. That was pretty good. That is pretty good. Uh, we're gonna we're are we gonna do this next week? Should we should we prime people to do it next week? I don't know. For what? No, do another one of these. Next oh, another, I thought we were. I we gotta we gotta do the power hour before I. 
That's going to have to be a Friday night show. Though. We're, we're going to we're going to have to do the straw power hour, right? If if you so choose to, I can it's do gotta a straw, be straw power. Got to be straw. All right. So here's the deal. Uh, we're we're going to make it next Friday, the eleventh. Ooh, yeah. It, right. As long as I don't go to Pittsburgh. Okay. Christ. That's going to depend on how. Uh, things go tomorrow at the office with my letter of resignation. We'll see. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, are you hoping that they'll be like, okay, don't, don't, don't bother? Or I'm hoping that, you out. I'm hoping to have a two week vacation, um, and that they're going to have to pay me for six weeks of time. Oh. So, do I need to take a day off work and and day drink? Uh, if I'm off for two weeks, somebody fucking better. Oh, easy. We got a day drink. We got a day drink. We could do, we could record a podcast in your living room getting just day drunk. That would actually be pretty funny. Oh, uh, yeah. We could do the macro challenge. We could do the macro challenge. We could do the macro challenge. So well, I'll let you know by probably Monday how that's going to shake out. I, <laughs> I, I drew up the letter today and we'll, we'll see. I don't know. It, my boss doesn't really like me. So we'll see if she doesn't like me. You have to work for two weeks or she doesn't like me. Just get out of my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so, all right. We're done. We're done. Um, a- anything else? We go to the order. I'm good to go. All right. I'm gonna stop. <laughs>